Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about how do you fertilize your indoor seed starts. And the key to this is to really understand you want very little fertilizer for your seed starts. The problem that happens is if you put too much fertilizer into any of these, these plants are at different sizes, you know, they've been growing here over the last anywhere from two to 12 weeks. If you put in too much fertilizer, your plants may turn purple, they may get yellow veins, they may get crispy around the edges. They're going to look like they're having problems. And then people think, well, the plant's a little bit yellow or it looks a little bit purple. Let me give the plants more fertilizer. You end up killing your plants because you have very little soil. Even in this tray that's growing tomatoes, and I'll be doing a video on growing tomatoes indoors. These are dwarf tomatoes if you want to subscribe and follow me. But even that amount of soil can get over concentrated with N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These little cells easily get over concentrated with N, P, and K, and the fertilizer ends up killing your plants. So the first tip, slow, low, steady amounts of N, P, and K. By going slow and low, if your plants turn a little bit yellow, you know that it's probably from not enough nitrogen, so you give them a little bit more fertilizer. So you want to stay low, and then if you have problems, you give them a little bit more fertilizer. Do not overdose your tomato plants, your seed starts, any of your plants with N, P, and K. You'll be severely disappointed. So, so let's start with some basic ideas, and I actually just wrote them out real quick to help you be able to see them and remember them a little bit better. You always want to start with a sterile starting mix indoors. I have plenty of videos that talk about that. If you want, once you have a sterile mix set up, go ahead and add in some worm castings. I like using worm castings. This is well below a 111 NP and K. I use a product from Vermisterra. I highly recommend them. Check out the video description for a coupon code. I've been using this for years. I basically mix one to two cups into 12 quarts of starting mix. That provides enough fertilizer for your seed starts to live for a while. If you try and add in organic fertilizers like tomato tone, plant tone, all great fertilizers, this is alfalfa meal. If you add in these organic products into your seed starting mix, they're gonna mold, they're gonna grow fungus, not necessarily bad for your plants, but this type of fertilizer has to be broken down by um, soil biology to be valuable to your plant. So by putting in the organic granular type stuff, you're kind of just feeding mold and fungus. You don't need it. So I recommend worm castings or a water soluble fertilizer. You can use organic water soluble fertilizer like fish emulsion. I'll just warn you that if you use fish emulsion, it does smell really bad indoors. So I prefer using the chemical types. The chemical types will not harm your plants. You already have a sterile starting mix. You're not worried about microbiology at this point. They'll get plenty of microbiology when you go out into your garden. You're just worried about giving them a little bit of fertilizer so they grow wonderfully and you can get them out into your garden. You want the N, P, and K value of your water-soluble fertilizer to be around a 211. Don't over worry about those numbers, but you want them to be low. Reason being is a lot of the chemical fertilizers water soluble fertilizers talk about you know one tablespoon or two tablespoons per gallon of water that's for the outdoors that's a higher concentration of n p and k so you want to use the water solubles at about one quarter strength of the outdoor dosage and what do i mean by that this one for example is a 12 4 8 n p and k that is too high too strong for your seed starts Outdoors, you use four teaspoons. Indoors, you use one teaspoon. So this product happens to tell you what to use for indoor plants, which would count as your seed starts. So you're using it at a drastically lower rate than four teaspoons per gallon of water. Let's do it simple math wise. If the fertilizer is a 10, 10, 10 NP and K, one tablespoon in a gallon of water, 10, 10, 10 is too much. Cut it down by quarter strength and you're going to get a 2.5 nitrogen, 2.5 potassium, 2.5 
um, phosphorus. That is low enough to use for your seed starts. Get it down close to that 211, 111 NP and K, just low. I'm stressing that because most people do the damage by overfeeding their indoor transplants. Less is better. Let's talk about how you fertilize them and kind of when you fertilize them. And again, I recommend the water soluble types, chemical or organic. That's a gallon of water. So it would actually just be a teaspoon of this into that much water. So again, low and steady. All right, let's take a look at some of these plants. So the plants here are all growing in a sterile seed starting mix. Please subscribe and follow me. Search my channel for sterile seed starting mix. It'll go over a lot of tips for you. So being sterile, there's no soil life in there. That's fine. We're just growing transplants indoors. You could put into worm castings like I recommend or skip the worm castings. The plants are going to survive off the seed coat for about a week after germination. Today is the 25th. These all went in on January 8th. That's what, about 17 days? These plants are ready for their first feeding, really. So what I would do is once a week, to maybe once every two weeks, when the plants are this small, I would just lift up the container and instead of just watering, I bottom water, I have videos on that too, about, you know, to a quarter depth of the tray right there, I would fill it with water, water my plants in. If it's a feeding time, I just water it in with one teaspoon of the fertilizer in that gallon of water and fill it a quarter of the way, put it back on, let the fertilizer absorb in with the water through the bottom of the tray. These plants are good for at least seven days. When they're smaller like this, that initial feeding may last seven days, 10 days, 14 days. You're gonna have a lot of time. As your plants get bigger, these are older, different stages of growth. Maybe you wanna feed these every seven to 10 days. You know, as you get down to bigger plants, I'm growing peas and spinach for food. As you get down to plants that are larger, maybe every five to seven days. But notice the leaves are really green. There's really good growth here because I just fed these guys. By going low and steady, if I notice any yellowing or any issue, all I do is just add an extra fertilizing into you know, my watering routine. And the plants are gonna do very well, in my opinion. So let's take a look at the plants down here. The tomatoes here are larger plants. You can even see some of the tomatoes forming. They're starting to turn color. The leaves look pretty good. You might see some damage like this. That is from the leaves getting too close to the light. Nothing to worry about. But the leaves are nice and green. There's no strange coloring. There's no purpling. There's no yellow veins, nothing. The slow and steady feeding, and these are probably getting fertilizer every five days, every seven days, are keeping the plants healthy, everything's growing nicely. That's the whole goal. And again, I'm gonna stress it for like the fifth time. Low, slow, and steady feeding is what you wanna do for your transplants. And just to recap real quick, sterile starting mix, if you wanna add in worm castings, that's what I recommend. I find the organic granulars tend to get moldy and fungus. A 211 NP and K, that's what you wanna try and stay at when you cut your um, dosing back when you're using the water soluble types that's usually about a quarter strength of the outdoor dosing and again low fertilizing you can't really go wrong if you just give them very little np and k because if you notice the leaves don't look right you add a little bit more you can always add fertilizer but you can't really take it away and that's when the most damage is done hope this helps give you an idea of how to fertilize your seed starts. Just don't overdo it. Please subscribe, check out my YouTube channel. Plenty of videos on all the different things you need to do to have successful seed starts. Thanks for watching and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.